What's up guys, welcome back to welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we got the 335i, just chilling here like a villain, and we actually have another car right over there. So the topic of today's video is actually neither one of these cars that are sitting here right behind me. The topic of today's video is actually a new car that we picked up for this channel, um, which is kind of crazy, because I basically told you guys I'm not really focusing too much on that kind of stuff, the rebuilding stuff. I'm more focused on the business, but I also thought about it. We started the business to rebuild cars and save cars, but also have parts to save even more cars. So. I was contradicting myself. So what I meant to say was, we're here to rebuild some cars on this channel. So what we got chilling right over here is a 335 IS that we're actually gonna be saving on this channel. I kinda wanna show you guys the reason why, again, I started this place, this business, um, and it's mainly because of cars like this. So if I show you guys this car, um, this is a 335 IS with only 78,000 miles. Um, it went into auction for pretty cheap, and it's mainly because this strut is literally bent like a C. Um, if I jack up the car right now, the wheel's gonna come right off. Um, it went ahead, punctured the whole frame right here. This whole frame shifted towards um, the inside, which is pretty bad. Um, so we're actually, what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually, we're gonna need a whole new front frame to chop off the front of the frame and actually get it replaced. But that also means that a lot of work needs to get done behind the scenes. So looking at the car, yes, this is a 335 IS. This is a six bolt with the DCT transmission. Um, it honestly doesn't look too bad. And that's what we thought, honestly, when we bought it from the auction, but it ended up being very, very, very bad. Now the price we got it for because it's low mileage um, is honestly still worth saving. And I don't really wanna part out such a low mileage IS. You guys know these are a limited production car and uh, I just think they're really nice. I missed my last IS. So we got another IS, but this one in particular is not for me. Now it is gonna be on this YouTube channel, but my wife, which is behind the camera, she started her own YouTube channel doing automotive stuff and she finally surpassed 500 subscribers on her own with zero help from me. So now that we finally have a build to do together, um, I'm gonna show you guys her YouTube channel. So let me link the first thing down below. Make sure to check her out. Um, we're basically gonna be building this thing on her YouTube channel. The full build series is gonna be on her YouTube channel, the modifications, the full build. But you guys will see behind the scenes of us taking this to the frame shop, the paint shop, and just getting little things done here and there on this channel uh, because you know it's just stuff that we're gonna be doing regardless. And the reason why this 335i is chilling right here is because as you guys can see, that one has front end damage. This one has rear end damage. And that basically means that every single part from the front end of this car can be transferred over to this car and including the front frame rails if needed. I know we're gonna try to pull those out, but worst comes to worst, um, this bad boy has an amazing front end. So if you guys look at it from right over here, nothing's been damaged right here. This is actually a clean title car. Um, the headlights are in immaculate shape. Again, this car only has, so that has 78,000 miles. This one has 82,000 miles. This is the N55, um, engine solid, training solid, the whole car solid, it's just the damage, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be removing these headlights, transferring them over. We're gonna move the hood, transfer those over, the fenders, transfer those over to the IS, the whole front radiator support, transfer that to the is i think the cooler and a bunch of things so you guys want to see a lot of stuff from this car get transferred over to that car um possibly even these wheels and these rotors let me know what you guys think about these wheels i believe they're called nietzsche wheels i'm not sure what the reputation are with these i never had, i've heard of them but i don't know much about them so let me know down below it does have pretty good tire tread continental tires so it's definitely better than what we're seeing right now on the is because somebody swapped out these ugly looking wheels on the is before sending it off to auction which is pretty upsetting because as you guys know, 335 IS wheels are supposed to look like that. We do have two rear ones. Um, they're, in, I guess, in decent shape, but we need a full set to make this thing a full IS. Um, so again, parts we still need, but for the most part, the reason why we got this place, combine two cars, make one a dream, and then still make our money back parting out the other. So yeah, that's kind of just a little update on what's going on with these two cars. So this build right over here is gonna be my wife's build, but it's gonna be on this YouTube channel, but primarily on my wife's channel. And then actually, I told you guys as well, we have an E92 M3, um, crazy mileage, it's gonna be rebuilt on this channel as well for a good friend of mine. And then also that's gonna be sitting right over here in a little bit, you guys are gonna see in this video as well, is a another crazy project, and actually probably one of the craziest projects um, but yeah, I guess you'll see that when we pick it up in a little bit. So I think with the how YouTube works is that you just snap a finger and then a beautiful car shows up. So let's just try and see. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of broke, but let's see. It's just like that, guys. Uh, yeah, YouTube's kind of crazy. If you just snap your fingers, a car just pretty much shows up here covered up, ready to go. But um, long story short, I thought I'm gonna announce this car to you guys in today's video, but you know what? It's honestly so insane that I kind of wanna have a whole separate video on that car in itself. The 335 IS is already a numbered car. I don't know if you guys know, but the 335 IS, there's only 3,400 made in the world, and only half of those are coupes, and only, I think even half of those are DCTs, or a little, I guess a little more than half of those are DCTs. So this is probably, Probably a one of 
let's say 1500, nah, let's say maybe, maybe one of like 1300 car ever made. That's why I love the 335 IS, pretty much a numbered car, not really, but almost. And this one right over here is also a numbered car. When I say numbered, there's not actually like a number on the dash or something like that that says one of something. But long story short, both of these cars right here were very limited production cars. And this one right here is probably the second most expensive car I've ever rebuilt on the channel. First being the Audi R8, uh, but the second one is gonna have to be this one. This is absolutely insane. There's gonna be some videos coming up on this soon. I just need to find the parts, find a good donor car for this car because this thing is absolutely smacked. I guess the focus of today's video is gonna have to be the, the beautiful IS. The IS is gonna be my wife's daily driver. So this is something, like I said, is gonna be on her channel and my channel, uh, but primarily we're gonna have to get this thing fixed for her. So uh, yeah, if there's a car I've missed that I've actually sold in the past, it would have to be my 335 IS. I had a black one that was like such a mint example. It was black on red. I put, I believe like an M3 style hood on there. Um, a really nice front lip, side skirt extensions. We even lowered the car. It was absolutely beautiful with red interior. And that one only had 58,000 miles on it. And ever since I sold it, I severely regretted it, but it got me to my R8, so I'm happy. So the fact that we sold it, got to the R8, and we're able to get another one it's just very heartwarming. So I'm super happy we got this one. This one's actually fixable. The last IS was absolutely clapped, so there was no way we were gonna be able to fix that white one. Um, this one only has 78,000 miles, while the other one had 140, so 78 worth reviving. So as of right now, guys, um, as you guys can see with the damage, it is pretty darn bad. If you guys look right over here, this wheel is barely holding on. Every control arm snapped. The strut brace is literally like angled 360 degrees, um, more like 180 degrees. It's pretty darn bad. Um, so yeah, the damage over here is really bad to the point to where I'm actually thinking we might actually have to cut the frame off of our donor car, which is shown right over there. Um, since the last snippet of this clip, you guys saw that this car was fully put together. Me and my brother fully knocked out this car, fully stripped it down, pulled off all the pieces we needed um, to get this bad boy junked. Other than one more thing, which is gonna have to be this frame rail right over here. So this is the unfortunate damage that happened to the 335 IS. The wheel kind of just hit this um, this actual like, uh, what is it called again? I'm having a severe brain fart right now, guys, but this is like the, the beam, the frame rails, the rails. So yeah, basically the wheel hit the frame rail and this frame rail unfortunately got came out this way a little bit, thus, Pretty much the subframe is not gonna line up straight. The crash bar, the whole front end, nothing's gonna line up straight. Technically, we could just slap the slap frame back on there and we can drive the car, but it would not be safe. So um, yeah, we're definitely gonna probably chop it off this car. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of this stuff, chop it off um, and take this with us just in case that one's gonna need the entire section. Um, I don't think that one is fixable. We actually had an E92 M3 that we picked up from LA with similar damage, but I believe that one was a whole lot more lightweight than this one. So anyways, there's nothing else we can really do at this point other than obviously getting power to it, seeing if the engine's good. If the engine and transmission goes in gear, engine starts up, I think it's definitely worth fixing. And then we're gonna go ahead, strip it down and see what kind of damage we have going on this 335 IS. So first signs of life, guys, not really getting much, which is super unfortunate. Literally, pieces of the headlights all the way up here. That is kind of crazy. This head of this headlight literally disintegrated into a million pieces. So unfortunately, this car is the same way as this car, and getting it off the trailer was such a pain. Um, we had to engage a transmission from the bottom of the car. Now getting actually power to open up the trunk. We're gonna have to get into the trunk by literally removing the rear seats. And that would have been such a pain, but on this car, thankfully, I found out somebody already pulled the trunk release for this rear seat. So that rear seat is pretty much ready to be folded down and we can pop the trunk. So we're gonna pop it and see what stuff is sitting inside that trunk for us. Hopefully some good stuff. You never know. I mean, some people have some nice things back there, you know, maybe some gold or some nice, you know. Dead body. Or dead body. We'll have to find out. I love how you believe you can just open it. What? What? Yes! Hello! You know you're right. Huh? There's some goodies here. Uh, what we got going on over here? Alrighty, so first things first. Eh, fortunately these are broken. This is actually not even from this car, I don't think. This is broken, fortunately. Um, what we got over here? Headrest cover. I mean, is this thing broken? I actually see no problem with this. This is the uh, the intercooler for this car, stock intercooler. So we have a spare one. So I guess this one's gonna go up for sale, but if we can make some more money back, why not? And then looking over here as well, it doesn't look like there's anything else that's really worth addressing back here. Uh, but as you guys can see, the trunk is very, very, very clean. Uh, just another module. Dang, but this one's broken, yeah. This is probably the most expensive module for these headlights, guys. But if you guys look right in there, all the pins are broken, so I mean, sometimes these things are savable, but this one, it's a no-go. It's like a $150 module, very expensive module. 
looking back here as well, it looks like they did save us a few bolts. Not really too sure what this goes to. 2012 BMW 335 IS. Oh, that's the wheel lock. So I'm assuming they put, yes they do, they have wheel locks on these wheels. So thankfully, they gave us the wheel lock. <laughs> that would have been an absolute nightmare. So super happy to see that. Let's go ahead, take off this bar right here and see if we could just apply that positive cable together so we get some power to this bad boy and see how many miles is on it, possibly even start it. It looks like this thing has possibly been into an accident before, which is the reason why we're seeing these gaps right here with the bumper. I'm hoping that's not the case, but I do see a little bit of metal, like the, the actual frame itself pushed in a little bit. I guess we're gonna have to find out, but that, that we might have to remove the rear bumper to find out that hidden damage. But you, I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh. That's not good. Yeah. We'll have to see. Is this worth saving? I'm thinking not, no. I don't know, man, I don't I'm know. discouraged. Let's just see if, these en if the engine turns over. Yeah. We might, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I really wanna save a car for once. We've been parting out a lot of cars. <laughs> we need to save something, you know, so. Let's give this one a little bit of, more of a shot. We'll figure this out right now. All right, guys, so this is an OEM BMW battery 2021. So I'm assuming that's a good battery. Uh, let's just go ahead and remove that cable, see if we can just kind of, you know, jump the cable and then put in a different battery for now, just because this one, I don't know. I don't know. We could just throw this one back in, but I might just throw in another one for now, uh, just because it's probably fully drained. So this cable is 100% blown. Let's see if we have another cable so we can just swap this bad boy out. This is the one we pulled out of the car. Um, this one, clearly, it's just blown. Everything's kind of like out of proportion on this one, so we don't need that anymore. Uh, this one looks like it came off of a different kind of car just because it has a different kind of insulation on here. Um, but in terms of the part number on this box itself, it's the same part number, so I'm assuming it should just work. So theoretically, if we stop in a new battery, put in this bad boy, we should have power. Um, just to get a little bit curious, I do see a little bit of kind of like, you know, a little bit of rust building up in here. So I don't know if this is a California car or not. It's not too crazy, uh, but again, I think at one point maybe there was an accident and then it looks like it got kind of like repaired partially, something like that. I don't know. Thing is with salvage cars, guys, you never really know if it's been in a previous accident or not, but uh, yeah. All right, so new cable installed, new battery, new to us. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy in there. All right, moment of truth. Will we get power? Oh, you see that? That looks good. All right, we got power, guys, which is a good sign. Definitely a good sign. It means the battery has enough juice. and also means the new cable we just put in is making contact. So what I like to say, that is a job muy done. Right? What? Sound like that. <laughs> Wait, why, why, are you, why are you doing that? I don't even know what that was. pull that ugly wire out of there. Hold on, let me try to pull it out from here. What is it for? aftermarket sound system oh no guys i'm not gonna lie i have a little bit of ocd right now because we got everything sorted over here i want this air to be absolutely perfect so uh i'm gonna go ahead and clean out this trunk real quick get all these aftermarket wires out of here so we can say 100 percent the truck is done the trunk not the truck the trunk so uh get back to you guys in about two seconds and just like that guys look at this trunk <laughs> I'm so satisfied. We got all the wiring out of the trunk. We got this all buttoned up. Everything's looking super clean and nice in here. Um, whether or not this thing had a rear end accident, doesn't look like it affected anything serious, mainly because um, everything's lining up inside the trunk. All the seals looking really good. I think the only thing that really happened was the bracket back here got pretty much tweaked and um, they pretty much just replaced the bumper without replacing the bracket, so that's why it's sitting off. I'm looking at this quarter panel and there's no buckles, nothing, no strain. Um, I'm even tapping right over here. That's straight metal. There's no Bondo. One second. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, okay. I confirmed my hypothesis. Yeah, so from the looks of it, um, I don't think any accident happened on the quarters on either side. I think basically um, maybe they had a loud exhaust or like a flame tune or something that melted the plastics or something with the plastics um, got warped to where the bumper is not sitting right. So that should be an easy fix. Um, we'll sort that out later. As for right now, we got power to the car. Let's go ahead and see if this engine runs. Um, and uh, that probably that's probably the make it or break it, whether or not we're gonna be rebuilding this or uh, I don't know if I want to part it out, just because we pretty much already have another 335 IS trans and engine. I might just want to sell it as is or send it back to auction if this engine's bad because it would just be too much work for the money we have into it. But fingers crossed, guys, this engine's good so we can save this bad boy. 
Okay, the mirror looks like it went into position. So we thought the mirrors were broken, but actually they went back into position, which is nice. Car does have Harman Kardon speakers. It's still doing the beeping sound, which means even with the aftermarket system they put in, they didn't mess up with the original sound system, which is really good. Um, now, as far as the shifter assembly, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this because it's throwing some codes, and then uh, we'll go ahead and give it its first startup. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we have some good things to look forward to. All right, guys, so now that we're in the interior, I got the shifter pretty much reassembled. Let's go ahead, give some power to the car. It was throwing a shifter light. Let's see if it's throwing any more shifter codes. If I go over to vehicle info, because I know if it throws a shifter code, it's probably not gonna wanna start up just because it thinks the transmission is probably not in gear or whatnot. All right, so, so far, the only code we have is a, uh, that's shocking, an airbag code, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, moment of truth. Will this bad boy start up? I want you guys to head outside and hear this bad boy. So from the looks of it guys, we have a huge coolant spill, mainly because again, that coolant heat exchanger, whatever you call it, is destroyed. Um, but other than that, in terms of oil, in terms of the engine, um, it is gravy in the Navy. That sound that we were hearing earlier, I'm going to shut this off, um, was the belt basically rubbing against all these plastics. So we do need to remove all these plastics for the repair for this frame. Um, and then uh, at the same time, it is going to be pretty much giving us a second shot and hearing this engine. Hopefully, once we get all this stuff out of the way, we can start the engine again. If it runs really solid, it'll be super happy. But so far guys so good super happy first startup it sounded very good and healthy and uh, like i said guys i mean for the most part this car is pretty pristine other than a few little things oh that's beautiful look how silver that is that's very well kept engine So after getting the car jacked up and uh, the wheel literally just fell off, <laughs> it's looking pretty bad. So thankfully, I'm not gonna lie, my neighbor next door, not the one next door, I'm Sweet G, Sweet F, not Sweet F, the one before F, I think that's, what is that, D? Uh, D, F, G, what is that, I don't even know, A, B, C, D, E, E. <laughs> oh, so there's E in the back, so I guess, yeah, D. So Sweet D does paint over here, which is pretty cool, and uh, he charges just as much as my normal paint guy, and he's literally two suites over. So if I gotta push this car over there for paint, that's awesome. And then Sweet B actually does frame, which is also pretty awesome. So yeah, it's pretty it's pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, this is Recycle Road, um, but I noticed that all these smaller units, um, they actually have different kind of work. They don't just do dismantling. There's a lot of people that obviously do dismantling, but I'm just super happy that people on my building block, um, one does paint, one does frame. They do amazing work. I've been seeing the work, like cars go in and out like crazy. Literally, the guy that does paint owns a Bentley. His Bentley looks beautiful. So long story short, I'm super happy that the work is gonna be able to get done on this street super quickly. I'm hoping fast turnaround times, and uh, it's just super easy to get the cars to them at the same time. But let me show you guys the damage real quick to kind of show you guys um, what we're dealing with exactly. So looking right over here, guys, uh, the wheel is pretty much completely snapped off. You guys can actually see the frame rail is angled this way, and uh, the way it's angled, it's not even buckled over here. This isn't the piece that's turning. The actual frame itself is angled. So that's a huge issue right there. I'm probably gonna end up taking off the crash bar and then putting back on the crash bar once we take off everything off the front clip. I'm hoping we're not gonna need to remove the engine, but worse comes to worse, we might have to remove the engine. So I'll let you guys know what's the deal with that. But in the meantime, we do need to remove everything over here on this side, the charge pipe, the intakes, the whole front end, um, the wheel, everything on this side of the suspension. And then we're gonna have to obviously figure out a way to get to the frame guy, uh, maybe even put on the um, the new stuff frame that we have with the all new suspension, everything. And then he's just gonna have to drop it over there once we actually get it to a shop, which is really right around the corner. Uh, but regardless, we're not gonna be able to get it to a shop looking like this. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just start disassembling as much stuff as possible and just seeing how bad this is. But just to kind to show you guys um how bad it is unfortunately the wheel just dipped in right over here kind of bent this inwards brought this outwards and pushed this also inwards you guys can see the uh, suffering right here is completely tweaked out um which is super unfortunate so uh yeah i think if i put on a new subframe that rear bolt will bolt up but this bolt right over here will not line up uh so that alignment and everything so it'll be completely crooked nothing's gonna line up in the front end of the car so uh yeah so considering the damage is right over here in this section i'm probably gonna go ahead and do a cut like somewhere far back here on that car just so we have as much frame rail as much parts as possible but before i actually do any more cuts off of that car i'm actually gonna wait for when the guy actually has some free time to come and tell me how far back we actually need to do the cut super nice that he's literally right over here like i said guys he's gonna literally be able to tell me where exactly i need to cut so super nice that again he's right over here um and then we'll figure out that situation again in a little bit but in the meantime let's go ahead and strip down as much as we can and make this car look less 
Octavro. So as I started removing more and more things, we got everything removed on this side. I just noticed that the actual, because the headlight was kind of sitting here, the headlight was covering up the fact that this, I don't understand how this is not bent, but the frame back here is buckled. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. So clearly the damage was so hard on this side that it shifted the subframe this way and bent this side. Honestly guys, at this point, I mean, we're kind of at that point where getting it back to the auction would be an absolute pain in the butt. It's just, it's just really not worth it. Um, the car only has 78,000 miles. The engine started up no problem. Literally the damage is pretty much just cosmetic to the frame, to the actual panels. Engine solid, training solid. Um, the rest of the car is pretty much solid. You know, it has a sports interior and whatnot. Again, I'm just kind of trying to you know, stay positive right now. It is a 335 IS that we kind of overpaid for because we wanted to rebuild it. Um, and there's still a slight chance we'll rebuild it. I'm still gonna remove the whole front end because we have to do that regardless. Uh, but we need the frame guy to come down here, give us an actual quote and see if this 335 IS is gonna live further uh, because end of the day guys, like listen, um, for the price we got it for, which we overpaid, we didn't expect any frame damage. That was the first thing. Um, I'm willing to pay some frame damage money, but now that both frame horns are bent, um, there's a good chance this engine has to come out, which is gonna cost me a lot of labor time, which is also gonna cost, you know, overhead time in the shop. Um, so we need to see whether or not that is worth it. And at the same time, uh, we still need to think in terms of profit margins that if whenever we do wanna sell this car, will we get our monies back out of it or at least break even? So um, obviously making money is the ideal goal, but I mean, at this point, looking at this, I think we're either gonna break even um, or, you know, maybe if anything, we're gonna make just a little bit, just because again, we got that donor car, so we, we saved a lot of money to begin with. But let's just stay optimistic let's just continue on rip this front end and just see how bad this damage really is this is just getting worse and worse i don't even want to pull any things off anymore at this point guys as i'm removing more and more things to diagnose the damage you guys can actually see that this bar is it has like a u going on it's supposed to be completely straight like the other side but i'm assuming because of the impact it probably shifted this entire section to the right um and basically pretty much put a divot in this which is kind of crazy And guys, moments later, so after diagnosing basically that both frame horns unfortunately have been on this car, uh, thankfully, again, with this donor car, we have the two front frame horns. They are identical vehicles, and uh, pretty much, this is what happened when I contacted the body guy. So I went ahead and actually contacted the frame guy, asked him if he can come down here. It is 8 p.m. and this dude's still working. I'm still working, you know, get that grind season going. Uh, but yeah, we got the car pretty much ready to be fixed. I think we're gonna go ahead and fix it. So here's the situation. He came over and diagnosed it. I didn't wanna film him just because, I mean, we're not really close like that, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Hopefully as we build a relationship, I could probably start filming and hopefully become more comfortable. But for now, I don't wanna make it feel uncomfortable. I just want this car to get fixed right now. And at the same time, this car that I'm kinda of keeping a secret needs framework. And also my friend's E92 M3 also needs some framework. So we're gonna need this guy for a lot of things. And I don't wanna make it feel uncomfortable whatsoever. But that being said, guys, this frame horn needs to be replaced. According to him, he could pull it and uh, he could just start adjusting things and it will probably be like 90% good. 90% good for a car is not safe, especially this is gonna be my wife's car. I don't want her driving a 90% good car. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and hopefully in the next episode, drop this engine, strip this engine bay completely, cut the frame literally right over here on both sides of this car so we have all the parts we need to actually get this front end 
fixed up. What he also said he needed was the subframe, he needed the struts, he needed the wheels, he needed the hood, fenders, headlights, front crash bar, the whole, the whole shebang. So the fact that he asked for all that means that he's literally gonna go ahead and line up everything before welding, which is gonna make the job literally perfect. So that being said, I do believe that this 335 IS is gonna be saved, hopefully, hopefully. The price he gave me is quite reasonable, so again, hopefully this thing is gonna be on the road. I am super excited, again, like I said, guys, to be driving another 335 IS, and my wife loves this car as well. I don't know what it is about the 335 IS. I think it's the specialty. I think it's the fact that it has a DCT transmission, that these cars are honestly just drive so amazingly. It sounds amazing. I just absolutely love it for the money. So without further ado, guys, it's gonna have to conclude this video. If you guys are excited to see the 335 IS on the road, and if you guys are excited to see what the new build is and that E92 of three get on the road, make sure to smash the like button. I heard you guys. You guys wanted some builds on this channel. I'm bringing it, guys. I'm bringing it. So make sure you guys are excited. But without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.